Parental guidance is advised for the following program. One nine nine eight, one nine nine nine, two thousand. Oh, Mr. Yap, yeah. what are you taking? Me, uh, I'm taking yeah. a steroid pill. S steroid? Yeah, like yeah. the banned substance steroid? Yeah, to hey, increase wait, 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 my wait, wait, muscle wait. mass. Can't you see that it's making a difference? Huh? Wait, 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 kids, kids. We cannot take drugs, okay? Say no to drugs. Don't try this at home, ah. Uh. Okay. Now, jokes aside, mm -hmm. I think we'll focus a bit more about what is the drug that you are taking, right? Uh, this is going to be a steroid. Yep. And we have the molecule over here, known as aldosterone. Right? Yep. Now, if you look at this molecule, we're going to observe the functional groups. So let me just uh, show you some of them that you've already learned before. The first of which is going to be a CC double bond. What kind of functional group is that? This is an alkene functional an alkene. group. We've seen this before, right? Now, we've also saw an OH over here. There are two OHs. What functional groups are those? Right, so the one on the top is, a, oh, sorry, on the right is a primary alcohol. Mm -hmm. The other one is a secondary alcohol. Right. And we also observed that there are two more new unknown functional groups over here. Uh, Mr. Yap, can you bring us through it? What functional groups are this? Right, so this is a C double bond O, or mm -hmm. what people call a carbonyl functional group. Mm -hmm. Now, if you want to look at uh, what is the carbonyl functional group, you need to focus on the carbon that is directly bonded to the oxygen. Mm. Now, you look to the left and the right of that carbon, mm -hmm. see what it's bonded to. Right. right. So if it's bonded to at least one hydrogen, mm. it's going to be called an aldehyde. Mm. So this is going to be an aldehyde. Mm -hmm. right, and if the carbon is bonded to two other carbon atoms, and that's mm -hmm. called a ketone. So this is going to be called a ketone. Yep. All right. So to quickly summarize, mm -hmm. carbonyl ca compounds can be subdivided into two kinds. Mm -hmm. One is called aldehyde. Look at the carbon. It must be bonded to at least one hydrogen. Mm -hmm. But for a ketone, it, it will be bonded to two other uh, carbon atoms. That's right. All right. Oh, whoa, whoa. No more already. No more already. Mr. Leong, I want more. Uh, it's okay. I'll teach you two methods to prepare more of your steroids. Okay, show me. Let's take a look at the first one. That's on reaction 7.4. Uh, we say that our carbonyls can be prepared using an alcohol through oxidation process. Now, we learned this in hydroxyl compounds that it is very important for you to know what is the classification uh, of the alcohols before it undergoes the oxidation, right? Uh, if we start off with a primary alcohol, which is over here, that's where your C is only bonded to one R group, uh, we can oxidize this to an aldehyde. Yep. But you have to bear in mind that uh, the conditions that you need must be fairly controlled. We have to use a weak oxidizing agent, dichromate, and as well as we must heat with immediate distillation. Yep. So you can help me to add this in into, the, uh, into your notes as well. Uh, Mr. Yang, what happens if I don't do immediate distillation? Let's say I decide to reflux it. Right, so the primary alcohol will be oxidized to the aldehyde, which mm -hmm. will be further oxidized into carboxylic acid. So you cannot stop the oxidation process halfway and say, hey, I want the aldehyde. Right? It doesn't work that way. If you don't do the distillation, you will not be able to isolate the aldehyde compound. That's right. Uh, the other way is to look at secondary alcohol, but the product you're going to get is going to be a bit different, right? You're going to end up with a ketone. So uh, we're going to use any kinds of oxidizing agent, potassium manganate, potassium dichromate, that is fine. Uh, but be careful here, just to help to change this, we don't heat with distillation. We usually do this under reflux, okay? So bear in mind, primary alcohol can only get you aldehyde. Secondary alcohol can only get you a ketone. So that's the first way of getting the steroids and carbonyl compound uh, for Mr. Yap to grow bigger. Right, so the other way that we can synthesize a uh, ketone is uh, to do an oxidative cleavage of an alkene. Mm -hmm. So if you look at the carbon-carbon double bond, focus on the left carbon, mm -hmm. that carbon is bonded to two different R groups. So what does oxidative cleavage or strong oxidation of an alkene does is that it will break the carbon-carbon bond down, mm -hmm. right? So that carbon on the left is bonded to two R groups, it will be converted into a ketone. Mm -hmm. Right, on the right, that carbon, because it has a different structure, is going to be converted to a carboxylic acid, right? Yep. So now, we're going to take a look at the structure as well as the chemical properties of a carbonyl compound, right? So we recall again that uh, a carbonyl compound must have a C double bond O. There are two R groups attached to it. If one of them becomes a H, it becomes an aldehyde. Yep. If both are carbon, it becomes a ketone, yep. right? Now, the important thing is we're going to focus on this carbon. Now, notice that this carbon, right, how many bond pairs and lone pairs do you see, Mr. Yap? Right, so there are three bond pairs and zero lone pairs. And what kind of shape do you experience? This will be trigonal planar. Yep, and hybridization? The hybridization of the carbon will be mm -hmm. sp2. That's right, so it's trigonal planar, sp P2 hybridized, yep. right? So uh, in this case, um, the idea is that it is going to be flat on a piece of paper. Yeah. So 
can I say that carbonyl compounds are trigonal planar than Mr. Yap? All right, so that's a common misconception that students would have. Mm -hmm. Now, about the carbonyl functional group, it is indeed trigonal planar. Mm -hmm. However, you, if you look at the R groups, there are other carbon atoms there. It may or may not be trigonal planar, depending on the situation. So you guys have to be careful with your phrasing. All right, so you always say that the arrangement about the carbonyl functional group is trigonal planar, right? Not the carbonyl atom uh, or carbonyl molecule is trigonal planar. That's not correct. So we'll take a look at the chemical properties of a carbonyl compound now. So here comes the million dollar question. Is a carbonyl compound an electrophile or a nucleophile? So if I take a look at the structure, the O is a very electronegative atom, right? Uh, as a result, this carbon uh, will be very electron deficient. So is this a nucleophile or electrophile, Mr. Right, so if it's electron deficient, mm -hmm. delta plus is going to be an electrophile. That's right. So if it's electrophile, it is going to get attacked by nucleophiles. So in general, if they themselves are an electrophile, they will not undergo electrophilic yeah. reactions. They will undergo nucleophilic reactions, right? Okay. Now, in terms of the carbonyl functional group, if you look at a functional group, there's an unsaturated bond, right? A double bond, right? Mm. So in terms of the type of reaction, do you think it will undergo an addition or a substitution reaction, Mr. Liao? Well, uh, if there's a multiple bond, there mm -hmm. is a pi bond, which is typically weaker than a sigma bond, yep. right? Yep. So I feel that it is going to break, and as a result, you are going to introduce two uh, different substituents that can be added across them. Yep. So I believe it's going to undergo an addition reaction. Yes. So in other words, to, to, to put it nicely, uh, carbonyl compounds generally undergo nucleophilic addition reactions. So to summarize with this uh, simplified mechanism, uh, this carbon is electron deficient. It is going to get attacked by a nucleophile. And because this carbon itself can only hold four bonds, right? Uh, it has no choice but to give up its last bond. And this last bond is going to give up is going to be the pi bond, the weak one, right? Yep. And this bond is going to break, causing to have it only have just one uh, sigma bond left. Now, the next part is we're going to take a look at uh, carbonyl compounds and we'll compare it against uh, different functional groups. The first of which is going to be an alkene. Now, if I take a look at the two structures, uh, you will notice that both of them have some similarities. Right. Mr. Yap, can, can you run us through that? So the similarities would be both of them have actually pi bonds, right? Mm -hmm. So, but if you focus on the alkene functional group first, mm -hmm. right? So it's a uh, pi bond between two carbon atoms. There's mm -hmm. no difference in electronegativity. Mm -hmm. So the bond is said to be non-polar. Yep. And it's, uh, because it's a carbon-carbon double bond, it's electron-rich. Right, mm -hmm. so it's gonna uh, it's gonna act as a nucleophile, and therefore it's gonna attack uh, attract sorry uh, electrophiles. Okay, but if you look at the carbonyl group, on the other hand, mm -hmm. the carbon now is bonded to a more electronegative element, mm -hmm. oxygen. So there's gonna be a separation of charge, causing a delta plus to be on the carbon and a delta minus on the oxygen, making the carbon susceptible to nucleophilic attack. So in general, we can say that alkenes they undergo electrophilic reactions, yep. right? But your carbonyl compounds undergo nucleophilic reactions. That is the difference between them. Mm. Uh, but what is the similarity between them? Right. Yep. They are both unsaturated compounds, so they will undergo addition reactions. So you can break your pi bond, and as a result, you're going to add two things across the uh, two atoms, right? Yep. All right. Now, the second functional group we are going to look at is going to be comparing between an aldehyde and a ketone now. Right? So um, when we look at reactivity, right, we are always interested in the, carb uh, the carbonyl carbon, which is electron deficient, and we want to see how easy the nucleophile can come in to attack them. And uh, how easy really depends on two factors. Yeah. The first of which is called an electronic factor, and this is really looking out for the number of R groups that is directly attached to the carbon. Now, if I take a look at um, a ketone, yes. you have two uh, alkyl groups, right, Mr. Yap? Can you tell me what kind of effect is uh, uh, alkyl groups going to exert? Right, so alkyl groups are electron donating in nature. They mm -hmm. will donate their electron density over to the carbonyl carbon, okay. making that delta plus there, so-called less delta plus, right? So it will make it less electron deficient mm -hmm. and therefore less attractive to a nucleophile. And we say that it's less susceptible to nucleophilic attack. So this means that actually ketone is less reactive yep. than aldehyde, right? Yep. That's what you can say. So that is the first factor that we're looking at. Now the second factor is known as the steric factor. Right. Yep. So imagine that now uh, we both will form a ketone. Yep. So right? we are the R groups of the ketone. Right. There's a C double bond O right in the middle of us. Yep. Okay. Nucleophile, come, come, come in, come, come and attack us. Right. So as you can see, the nucleophile cannot squeeze in between us because the two of us are very bulky. We are very you know big size and muscular. So the nucleophile don't have space to squeeze between us. However, what if we are an aldehyde? So I'll push him away. The R group is gone. So now there's just a single hydrogen atom here. So hydrogen is atom is a very small atom. It's negligible in size. So now the nucleophile can actually squeeze in between us and attack the carbon. So this is what we call steric hindrance. The bulky groups are going to exert steric hindrance, hindering the approach of the nucleophile. Okay? Okay, thank you.
All right, Mr. Leung, please come back, please come back. Okay, okay. I'm coming back to summarize things for you. Thank you. Okay, so, so far what we have seen is uh, the comparison between aldehydes and ketones, right? So in general, because of these two factors, we can say that ketones are generally less reactive yep. as compared to your aldehydes, yep. right? So uh, this mechanism, we're going to see this in class. Yep. All right, so see you in class. Bye. Oi, stop eating. Okay, sorry. 2004. Oh, oh, done. Wait, what was wing? You say wing? I, I will W I N G it. I'll wing oh, it. wing it, wing yes, it. Okay, okay. Yes. Boomer. You took my stuff and so I don't know what's going on. Then you take I it back, ah! Action? Can? Oh, action, sorry. Action. Chemical property, okay? Mechanism. Wait, where's all this? Where's all this? It's not here.